These are the parts for the tool turret for my CNC lathe. Um, I designed all this myself. I made it uh, at work after hours in the shop, which they encourage as long as it's off the clock, which I think is awesome. So this is the housing. I basically started by boring out this front bearing pocket here. There was just enough run out in the spindle that dialing it in on dimension, it actually made a perfect slip fit, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, then I finished this main bore, flipped it around, located it on the bore, and then I actually did this bearing pocket. Now, because bigger is always better, I made it too big. That's unfortunate. The top operation was uh, fairly straightforward. It was just profiling like this, cutting this uh, pocket on the top here, and then drilling and tapping some holes. The second part I made was the shaft, which is fairly straightforward turning. Um, these parts where the bearings go, I turned like five thou over size and then spent a couple hours sanding them down because I'm not very good at using the lathe. Um, and then I put it in a 5C hex fixture and uh, put it on the mill and I cut this hex. So this goes together much like you would think. It gets a double row angular contact ball bearing on the front. And it goes into the housing like this. And then this <laughs> rather loosely slides into the back. So for mounting the motor, um, it's sort of better to go in from the front because there's threaded holes in the motors. I didn't really have that option. I didn't have the space to do it. So I drilled through two of the mounting holes and I just put my own fasteners in. And so that actually threads onto the back like this. There, nice and tight. And this is actually a set screw. Mechanically inclined among you may have noticed my poor design choice here. Um, the problem with this is that I've got a big bearing in the front, a big bearing in the middle, and then two motor bearings. And because I have a rigid coupling here, I'm basically making them all one shaft. And if there's one thing mechanical components don't like, it's being over constrained. So if this was a high speed shaft and there was any deflection in the joint whatsoever, which you can always assume there is, um, the motor bearings would get totally chewed up trying to follow what the bigger bearings were doing. I decided that that was okay in this application. It's, uh, it's very slow moving and it's also not going to rotate that many times in its life. Worst case, I can replace the motor. So now that that's all tightened up, we can talk about the turrets. So this is the first turret I made. Uh, I made it out of aluminum because aluminum's nice and easy and I wasn't 100% sure what I was doing when I made this. Um, I did realize that putting a pawl on the back of a piece of aluminum like this would probably wear out pretty quickly. So I made a steel insert, which is just mild steel, but it's worlds better than the aluminum. And I located it by putting a hex in the middle there. That way when it's sitting on the pawl, the tool is actually presented to the workpiece. The second pawl I made is solid steel. It's also just mild steel. I, um, I actually blackened this with the Birchwood Casey gun bluing kit, which worked pretty well. Um, it looks okay. It's not as nice as regular black oxide. It sort of chips at the edges, it seems. Um, this turret is actually designed to take 5 16 inch shank tools. So uh, that would let me use um, some larger tools. My main goal was to be able to do parting tools that weren't like, you know, hand ground. Uh, unfortunately, even with 5 16 inch shank tools, you're pretty limited for parting tools unless you want to shell out the money for Swiss lathe tools. Um, so actually, my new tool turrets, which I'm designing now, um, it's a whole new housing and new turrets, but it's designed to take 3 8 inch shank tools. So that's going to be good. Um, but anyways, back to, uh, back to the old uh, turret housing. So it's, like I mentioned, ratchet and pulled. So I designed this profile so that it would properly seat the tools while it was engaged, which I'll show you at the end. So this actually locates with a shoulder screw. That just goes in through the front like that. And then this goes in here. There's actually threads at the bottom of this hole. Um, and I did the, uh, the tolerance stack up such that, uh, oops, wrong one. Such that the, when this is tight, there's just a couple of thou clearance. So it's a good snug fit. I was getting ready to shim it, but it looks like I didn't have to. For the spring, you know, I have a huge collection of springs, but obviously I didn't have the right sized one. So I just took the spring out of a cigarette lighter and cut it in half, and it uh, works perfectly. Um, all that's held on by this sort of uh, <laughs> crappy little piece of laser cut plastic, I guess, and these unreasonably small screws. Uh, they're M2s, I think.
For all the work I like to do with my hands, I'm actually really not very dexterous. These have to sit fairly flush or else they'll hit the turret. So there, now it springs. So to put the turret on, you actually just slide it on like this and you kind of counter rotate it until the pole gets out of the way. One thing that's kind of nice now, when I put the fastener on the front, if I hold the turret steady while I tighten the fastener, it pulls it into position. So it's a pretty tight fit. Um, I think ideally you would have a tapered hex and that way it would be 100% repeatable, but close fit's pretty much good enough for me. I think if I ever took the turret off, I'd probably have to re-zero all the tools, but that's all right with me. The final part is uh, the cover for this little this little pocket. So this little pocket is actually <laughs> uh, started life as just a way of getting to the uh, the set screw in there, but um, I eventually decided that I want to put the electronics in there too. So in terms of electronics, it's uh, this little uh, Digi Spark thing. It's uh, I think it's a Kickstarter project or something, but um, it's basically just a little microcontroller and it plugs right into your computer. Um, you really don't need a lot of computational power for this, but uh, I just wanted something small. Unfortunately, I tried to run this off the same power that I ran the stepper motor driver off of, and this is just a, a DRV8825 from Palalu. Um, but it got really hot, and it got hot to the point of shutting down. It says it can run off 6 to 16 volts. I gave it 12 and it overheated. It's probably something I'm doing, it's probably not their fault, but um, I decided to move on. I'm not really too strong in electronics, so um, what I'm going to go for in the, the next two tool turrets is this. It's uh, the Arduino Nano Pro. Um, it doesn't have any USB stuff on it, so you've actually got to use like a little FTDI breakout to, to talk to it, but I figure once it's programmed, I'll just throw it in and forget about it. Um, the new tool turrets actually also have, they have a much larger cavity, and they have clearance for wires, and it's just much better. Um, you can see I did the cavity here, but I mean, I'd have to put some kind of a plastic shoe in there to hold everything together. So anyways, if you know, you pretend the electronics are inside there, this just goes on like this. Tighten these four screws. All right, those are all tight. And it's put together. So like I was saying when I was talking about the Paul, uh, it's contoured in such a way that if it's ever so slightly off like that, it reseats. So the idea behind that is if you were turning apart um, like this, uh, this pencil um, and you were running it past the workpiece like this, if this were ever so slightly off, it would catch and it would kick up and you'd probably shatter your carbide. So when I was turning with it, I made, I made a, a chess pawn um, and I didn't have that problem. It seemed to cut okay. That being said, I didn't actually have it changing tools by itself. Um, I'm going to write a, a plug-in for Mach 3 to make this work. It's got a sort of fairly simple uh, firmware setup that I've already written. It's uh, basically just an enable pin, and uh, once the enable pin is enabled, another pin counts out how many tools to change, and it'll, it knows how far to go, and it accelerates and decelerates and all that. So, um, so yeah, I didn't have that when I was cutting the pawn, but um, I just manually put it in place and it seemed to work really well. Um, so yeah, overall I'm really happy with it. Um, it's very much a proof of concept. It's very much just sort of a fun thing to work on. I like it because it's shiny. Um, the new ones are, are much more pro. I put sort of more thought into them. There are some things I still didn't get around, like I've still got the shaft directly coupled to the tool changer shaft, for example, which is non-ideal, but like I said, I'm sort of comfortable with it. Um, if you want to keep following this project along, then subscribe or follow me on Instagram, or both. I post on Instagram fairly often, and I'm hoping to do more YouTube videos as I progress further with this lathe build. Thanks for watching. Cheers!